Hey guys, welcome back. So I know altcoin seasons, we could say just around the corner, but not too far away. It could be a few months, could be next year at some point. So everybody's probably trying to figure out where's the bottom, where's the bottom for my altcoin anyway, right? So uh, the often neglected, ignored, uh, thrown in the corner, whatever you want to call it, uh, potential indicator or a way to measure how your altcoins are doing versus something right uh is how 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 they're doing against bitcoin what's their bitcoin valuation so uh we're gonna look at a few altcoins in this video ethereum solana bnb uniswap doge and ada uh, we're gonna go through those on their btc valuations look at when they hit their lows and see if those match up or at least how they match up with their usd price lows so if you guys enjoy the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, hit that big old subscribe button right next to it. And we're just going to hop right into this. So I've already gone through all the altcoins that we're going to do in this video, all six of them. I've put these blue arrows here that you guys can see on the chart here. Yep, right there. I've dated those arrows and I don't think they've moved at all. So the date should be correct. Uh, and then I'm going to overlay a price chart on it. So all the bar charts that you're going to see, at least... Um, for for the first part of this and I, I think the whole video are going to be the bitcoin valuation of whatever altcoin that is so in this case this is ethereum uh in bitcoin so right now it would it, one ethereum is worth 0 0.04241 bitcoin uh, not a whole lot but obviously more than when it started over here at just 0 0.0022 uh, bitcoin uh, if you go way back to 2016 over here or 2015 even um, so this basically just gives you a comparison how well your crypto is doing versus Bitcoin. The higher it is, the better your crypto is doing, the better the altcoin I should say is doing, the lower it is, the better Bitcoin is doing at that current period in time. So if you're, for example, uh, let's get with our, my favorite arrow tool here. Um, if you started down here and your crypto is now up here over time, uh, if you invested right here, you're doing better than Bitcoin overall. And now you can cherry pick some data in there and you probably get better results. But uh, regardless, that's basically the trend you're seeing here. If the opposite's happening, if your crypto started over here and it's going out to the downside, you are losing against Bitcoin. And Bitcoin would have been the better investment. So it's a, a real quick, easy way to see how uh, you would have done versus Bitcoin if, if you had just gone all Bitcoin or something like that. Um, Let's just hop into some charts here. So right here, I've, I've got a few trend lines too. I didn't, I didn't put them all down. But I put I threw a few down that I think, or I should say maybe support or resistance lines. I'm not even sure what, what you want to call these with what we're doing here. I guess support and resistance works. So the uh, the lows here, I threw out most of 2015. I do have one for 2016 here tagged. It's a different market back then, so I'm not really sure that's going to count much. Uh, moving on, we got some in 2017, 2018, 19, 20, 22, and then finally we have a couple up here. Uh, so basically I'm looking for, uh, as the altcoin, in this case, Ethereum is doing well against Bitcoin. I'm looking for its its biggest low, essentially, uh, after its its rise up. Um, things like that for support lines. So I tagged that one on December 4th, 2017. We came back, we tested it a couple times, three times here. I didn't put that arrow in there, but we can see what it looks like. And then it actually fell below that, set a new low, bounced off that low, and then proceeded to move up in 2020, 2021. Now, Bitcoin was doing pretty well here, so we didn't have the parabolic rise, uh, you know, as we did in 2017, but we still had a pretty good rise up. We did have a low set here, uh, and we'll look at that. That one's kind of interesting to me, and not all the charts are going to line up perfectly, by the way, guys, but it, it's still pretty interesting. We did have a low here, so I did tag that with a trend line, or excuse me, a support line. Uh, we, we did bounce off, but we tried to hold it as support here and just couldn't. We fell back down to basically where we're at now. I threw a line down there. I'm not sure that that line's going to hold, but it seems to be we wicked off it a couple times here, so it might have some relevance. It does kind of match up with a couple wicks and peaks we had over here. Who knows? We'll see. These are spotty at best. So without further ado, let's throw up a price chart here on ETHUSD. We'll overlay that. Don't think I'm going to have to probably do new scale for this one. And let's see what we get. So do a little movement here and I'll get these arrows kind of matched up just so we can kind of see that. 
Uh, I know there's probably a lot to see here. It might be a little much on your screen, but the big thing we're gonna look at is these arrows that are lined up linear, straight up and down vertically with the date that Bitcoin was hitting a low for that area. So December 16th, 2016, that's gonna be a hard one to see, but let's zoom in, just see what the heck's going on there. Uh, we're gonna have to get way, way, way zoomed in over here. And well, I mean, we kind of hit a low for this area. So I mean, that, that actually somewhat works. And really, even if we pulled over here where Bitcoin was hitting its lows, we're hitting fairly low on the ETH USD price here. Um, so I'm not, not uh, you know, maybe I should have thrown those on there. I'm not uh, fully convinced that that early time period for Ethereum is going to be much different than what we got here. Let me zoom back out here so we can get some uh, normal scale going on. Uh, we've got one here in December 4th of 2017. It did mark a little tiny local low, like a... A monthly low but didn't really do a whole lot for us here ethereum hit about four hundred dollars at that point and then it did go up to fourteen hundred dollars so if you actually bought there it wouldn't have been a bad a bad buy at all uh which is nice to see um let's see what else we got here uh we're going over towards let's just do this get a little different view here for you guys uh december 3rd 2018 that that one lines up really well I'll move that arrow just a little bit for you all there let me let me zoom into the current range so we did hit a pretty good low i mean that might have been it looks to me it was the low so that's pretty interesting to me i didn't put an arrow here on the first time it hit the line i should have but that was also a pretty decent low and we're talking a price range of one, about 200 down to, oh, right about $85. So, I mean, that's a pretty significant change there. I mean, you would have lost 50% of your, your investment there if you bought. But if you did hold, you would have made quite a bit of money still. So it, it's an interesting one for sure. Uh, we did end up bouncing a couple times here and then actually hitting a lower low for the USD valuation uh, in the 0 0.016 range on September 2nd, 2019. Would have been an okay area to buy. Again, about $200, maybe $175 there, kind of just winging it. Uh, we bounced off that again or very close to it on January 6th of 2020. And that was also, and I can just zoom in for this if you guys want a little more detail right there. Uh, we also hit another decent little low spot here. So in the grand scheme of things, these weren't bad prices. Yeah, if you had bought at a couple of these, maybe maybe it could have done a little bit better. I mean, if you had bought at this one, which I didn't tag just because it didn't fully make it all the way down, uh, it was a wick at best. Uh, I felt like this was a much better uh, test of the, the uh, support line here, the resistance line, whatever you want to call it, however you see it. Um, and that, that's really why that arrow wasn't here. If you did buy there, you would have lost a little bit of money, sure. But in the grand scheme of things, like I said, you're going way up. So these arrows that I did throw down, they were pretty good prices. They they weren't always exactly the bottom. This 20, uh, 2018 one here, December 18, uh, excuse me, December 3rd, 2018, that was actually really, really good uh, indicator there. So moving on over towards a little more current times here. What do we got? Well, look at that. So some of these lines were kind of difficult to put down and and you could challenge them if you guys want to um you know i, I don't know what you want to call them but but they weren't sometimes you just got to throw something down and see what's working here um but you could also i got to be careful because you can throw a line down and make it work for you and i'm not trying to do that so uh, ethereum here was clearly on an uptrend versus bitcoin uh and it's usd here of course in the pink uh okay so i'm not not seeing any new lows really here. We're still on an uptrend, uptrend, uptrend. Then finally we come down and we hit uh, where I now have a line. So that's where I, I threw it in here. We were below the bull market support band for Ethereum, for, uh, Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. Uh, Ethereum USD was dropping in price. So, you know, things are kind of lining up for me. We're, Ethereum's kind of in a downtrend here, right? Uh, especially versus Bitcoin. And that's what's important. So trends broken, I throw in an arrow. All right. Well, it matches up pretty darn well here. And that is June 13th, 2022. And if you had bought, there was a little bit better price just after, but that would have been about $1,200, somewhere in that range. I don't have the exact pin, maybe even 1300 I don't know. Or excuse me, 1100 a Pretty good price, though, if, if you really were trying to buy in this time period. Yeah, if you had waited two weeks, and this is a weekly candles, by the way, if you had waited two weeks, you probably could have got it just a little bit lower, about a grand. But hey, who's, who's going to sweat that much, right? So now that I've got these lines in there, 
I thought, okay, well, let's see what's going on. We did test these this line again, uh, like really, really local low, like a weekly local here or a monthly local low. I, I don't think that should count. I'm not seeing a whole lot from this here. I mean, yeah, we dip below it. Our USD price did drop. However, a line I like a little bit more, and I, I threw down because we've hit it a couple times, and then we did have some resistance from it out here. One, two, three times. Kind of tried to use the support here. Uh, we're we're pinging off it now, right? Right. So we've got wicks down to it. Uh, we're touching it, and it's really right at about the point four, point zero four, excuse me, uh, valuation here in Bitcoin, and that's uh, that's interesting. So that's something I'm watching, uh, as you guys can see here. Let me. Let me do a couple moving pieces here for you guys. You can see that we are dropping and, and we've touched again and the price has dropped even more. So maybe this, the 0.4 range, could be the start of the bottom for the USD valuation of Ethereum. Uh, I'd like to see if it does fall through there. Is it going to come down to 0.25? That seems a little low for me, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's somewhere between, say, 0.4 and 0.25, or excuse me, 0.04. And 0 0.025. If we got to bounce somewhere in here, or if we dip below this 0.4 line, I think you're probably going to be seeing some decent Ethereum USD pricing. Personal opinion. Uh, you guys kind of, you know, make your own opinion here based on what you're seeing and, and other factors. I don't want to be the the only factor. Should not be this video. So please research a little bit more. But for me, that's something I'm definitely looking at here. If we keep holding at this line too, that, that's going to be of interest to me. I'm going to see what happens with the USD price as that happens. It, it has happened before. The longer we're there, it seems that we, in this area right here, you trend down a little bit. Uh, and of course, this line right here, I didn't really, it's hard to count because this was the shutdown, the pandemic shutdown. But as we're bouncing off one of these trend lines, uh, excuse me, support or resistance lines, I don't know why I just keep saying that, the price does seem to keep dropping. So the longer we spend, on one of these lines, it seems that the, the USD valuation drops, uh, at least as we're trying to hold it as support. So that's Ethereum. Again, just zooming out here. You guys can see that it does line up fairly well in many cases. It's not perfect, but I mean, it's it's pretty good. It's a pretty good indicator. If you're buying at any of these times, even here when it was on the uptrend, in USD anyway, it still would have made you some money. So that that's of interest to me for sure. So switch over to Solana Bitcoin here, another one that you guys are all big on out uh, in the crypto world. Um, a few more here, trend lines, uh, going back to Ethereum, and let me get rid of this um, overlay there. So Ethereum's a little more challenging to throw trend lines on for me, uh, just just kind of an, a messy chart. Not a bad chart, just, just challenging for for support lines and resistance lines i just don't know why i want to keep saying trend lines anyway solana uh, bitcoin a little bit easier for me to see some some trends here uh, my lines could probably be adjusted a little bit like this guy could come down they're not perfect i just kind of threw them on there to show you guys i mean we could even throw it right there if we wanted it doesn't really matter at this point it's it's very close uh and i don't think that line's going to be in use anymore anyway it could be but probably not so Let's look at the dates we got here. So December 28, 2020, December 26, 2022. We got June 2023. Got a couple in 2024 early and then June of 2024. So let's go ahead and overlay Sol USD onto our chart. It's going to be the pink lines here and see how it fits. So we'll go back to the beginning here. And wow, that, that's looking honestly really good. So it, it missed, and maybe I missed actually, we could probably move this over to uh, December 28th instead of December 2020, and that's probably just a, an error I made. Uh, so that's that to me is lining up pretty well right there. And in fact, that probably should be the date that this arrow is, and I could just move it over there right now and it would line up perfect. But because my date's wrong, I'm just gonna leave it here in the video. But for all intents and purposes, that looks like, to me, that's where the, uh, the arrow actually should have been. So not too bad there for Solana. That one looks like it lines up pretty darn well for USD. Um, Solana valuation being very low. Over here, this is what really gets me. When the altcoins are new, things get a little silly, but it, it still works. So as Solana bounced off this trend line here, set a new low, it came back and tested it. And both times it hit, after it had already hit a high with its Bitcoin valuation, 
it came down. I think I said trend line again, didn't I? It hit this support line, geez. And look at that, we have a low in USD valuation of Solana and we were at 10 bucks on this one according to this chart. And this is a weekly, so if it went a little bit lower, it went a little bit lower. It probably did, I think it was six bucks around then, right? So June, six months later, June 5th, 2023, we do the same thing and it is another pretty darn good local low here. This turned out to be the cycle low, it looks like here in December, 2022. Uh, moving over, this is where things get a little more challenging for me. And I, I, it's still working, but not as well as I would have wanted it to. Uh, January 8th, 2024, look at that. We, we've hit another low. I don't really have a whole lot of faith in this. I threw it in here just to see what would happen. Uh, we're still in an uptrend. So for me, a lot of this data isn't that great, but if you were trying to buy in an uptrending market, a, a more of a bull market for Solana, and you're still trying to do this uh, kind of ETC valuation here for it, it's still working a little bit. Uh, these are still beating the highs, but I mean, I, I just don't think it's worth all that much. Um, will this trend line be of any use in the future? Maybe. It depends how many times we bounce off it. To be honest, for me, I'm not really counting these three. I really, and maybe that's wrong, but but I still think Solana is an uptrend versus Bitcoin, or, or at least it has been. It might be kind of transitioning now to the downside, and that's really what we're looking at in this video. So these guys worked really well. Uptrend here, I just thought I'd try it. It still worked decently, but not quite not quite where I wanted it at all. Uh, not quite what anybody wants here, to be honest. It's, it's just not really what this video is meant for, but I threw it in here just to see what happens. So my thought is on Solana, in case you guys are curious here, is that we watch when Solana comes back down to, and I know my chart's getting a little dirty here, so I'll get rid of this for you guys, is when Solana comes back to this line right here. And that line is roughly, and this is very rough, uh, it's the 0.0011357 Bitcoin. I, I pulled it off some resistance here that we had uh, on an uptrend. Uh, it, didn't, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. So what I'm, I'm really waiting for is Solana have a pretty good low here besides what we have now. So we'll see if it hits this line. Uh, this is kind of just something I'm watching. Uh, in the future, see what happens. Um, it did have some resistance over here too as well. So maybe it plays a role, maybe it doesn't. I'll actually extend it out a little bit just in case it takes a little bit of time. And I'll put this line out too. I'll come back to this at some point, maybe October, November at some point, maybe sooner if it goes down. We'll make a video, see what happens here, kind of kind of revisit what we're looking at. But I really do think that we're gonna see this line right here be the one of, of more important value to us in a downtrend. Cause right now Solana has been going up and we are waiting for a downtrend for this to work. Cause every time we're looking at lows here, we're looking at Solana Bitcoin valuation in a downtrend. So what's the use of looking at an uptrend, right? Probably not a whole lot, but I thought it might be interesting. So I threw it in here. So hopefully I didn't confuse you guys, but again, if it did, uh, you're just looking at basically the first three arrows here as far as does this work or not, right? So downtrend worked, downtrend worked. We found the bottom, we found the bottom. Cool. BNB, &B, build and build, the Binance chain, right? BSC, whatever you wanna call it. Got a few on here, uh, downtrends, right? Uh, somewhere in this range here. Again, BNB &B was pretty early, 2017 though, threw it in there. Another downtrend, 20, uh, no, excuse me, November 26, 2018, downtrend found the, the local low. Uh, January 11th, 2021, it's still in a downtrend, found another low, uh, another downtrend after 20, was it 2022, right? Um, looks like it was December 4th, 2023. So we'll see what all that looks like. And this is a much, this is probably one of the cleanest charts that I was able to do this with. And by the way, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the video, I mean, look at this chart here, BNB &B keeps on rising. Like this is, this is very good. So if you guys bought BNB, &B, Almost at any point, you're probably doing really well. Uh, it's it's one of the more surprising cryptos that I've seen. It it just keeps going up. Anyway, let's pull up BNB USD on here and check it out. And see what we got. So we'll do a new price scale, and we'll kind of move it around here. We'll zoom in a little bit. So look at that. Okay, so as we started out here, a little bit wonky. 
And again, maybe I could have put this in a better spot, but it, it was to me, it looked to be the lowest candle here. Wouldn't have been a bad time to buy. You had a pretty big run up after it, but was it the bottom? No, but we calling this a downtrend was pretty tough for me, but I still want to throw it on there at the start just to see what happens. This video wasn't to prove myself right, anything like that. It was just to see what happened. So I, I left the good ones, the bad ones, the trials. Uh, over here though, for a for sure downtrend, November 26, 2018, really close to the low, really close, two weeks off. So if you're buying there, very good pricing, right? And maybe this could have been the low. Uh, you know, I was eyeballing a lot of this, so maybe I, it, it would be actually one week off. Uh, depends where you're gonna call it and how you wanna pick it. So uh, like I said, I didn't change a lot of the arrows I put on, I just kind of kept them on there. Over here, uh, still in a downtrend for the most part. This, this was the bottom. Uh, for the US, excuse me, the Bitcoin valuation of Binance coin, BNB coin. Uh, it was before the parabolic rise, bounced off this trend line and shot straight up. So maybe that uh, just in itself is a good time to buy if you think it's going to bounce off a trend line or excuse me, a support line. Jeez, I just can't get over that, can I, in this video? At some point in this video, I think maybe, I think just maybe I might be able to say support or resistance line and not a trend line. Anyway, uh, did it did it time a bottom? No, but it did time a decent time to, to buy. So I'll leave it in there. Over here, uh, we made a new low on the BTC BN, or BNB BTC valuation. Uh, it wasn't the bottom, but it wasn't far off. It was about four weeks off, five weeks off, something like that. Uh, early October to uh, December 4th, so two months off, I guess, if we're uh, being exact. But not too bad. Price of... 227 versus 210 so that's not too bad either uh, if you had bought either of those it would have been just fine so it it does work here as well especially on a couple of these candles here uh, but even here i mean this this was still a great buying opportunity you went from approximately uh, 40 dollar bnb all the way up to if we want to go to the very peak 660 so that's over 10x that's 15x or something like that right so that's pretty damn impressive if you bought any of these arrows even this first arrow, you would have still had that big run up too. So, so far, this is, uh, in my opinion, still working pretty well. Perfect? No, but works really well. So next up, we got Uniswap. Uniswap is one of those ones where maybe you're not doing as well as you want to do against Bitcoin. I still, personally, I do like Uniswap, uh, but, but I can't deny that the trend is down as of right now anyway. Uh, who knows why? Sometimes Bitcoin just, just is going to beat everything. Bitcoin is the king, so... Uh, you got to kind of live with that too. Let's look at uni in USD valuation here. We'll pull up the uh, we'll pull up the old Coinbase one, new scale. So what do we got right here? Well, I mean, this is kind of a beginning of Uniswap, but it it worked. Yep, sure. Bitcoin evaluation evaluation was very low. Of course, nobody really knew what the value of Uniswap was at the time. So if you want to not count that one, that's fine. Um, I pulled in another arrow here just kind of kind of seeing what would it would be it wasn't the low we did make another low or, uh, later on but it did mark a, a somewhat very like micro local low uh, on december 13th of 2021 however when we did finally kind of we hit a, a low spot here could have put an arrow here i ended up just putting it here where we had a better candle uh, I, I probably could have put it on this red one too and really time the bottom here but i did not want to move anything i did i just kind of threw it on what i thought would be the bottom potentially so i don't want to didn't want to change any of the data to make make my uh video make me look more correct or something like that uh but anyway june 13th 2020 uh really feels like this was the line to to be marking here we had two three candles here bouncing off of it using it as support and it did mark pretty much a local low or maybe even a cycle low. Uh, I had a couple more here that would bounce off later, about a year later. We have June 5th here, another, and this is interesting because it's almost the same price in USD, about four bucks right there. Uh, another bounce off that line. We tried to test it again, didn't really hold it and actually saw, I mean, we, we battled with it for a bit here and we actually saw the price of Uniswap rise. So a bunch of fighting here on this line, uh, support, resistance, support, resistance, uh, got above it, shot way up in USD, ended up losing it. I think the SEC brought up their lawsuit or whatever at that point. Uh, we set a new low, so I put a new line. 
Uh, did it hit the, exactly where the USD low was? No, it didn't. But the more we're hitting this, the more we're dropping over here. So I'd thrown a line down on August 5th because I didn't really want to do the current date of the video. And it lined up basically perfect with uh, this little dip here, which turned out to be just a, a little really dip for more downside. And we're still battling with that line. Do we hold the line? I don't know. It's it's the lowest the Bitcoin valuation's been for, for this particular project. Uh, we'll see what happens. If we do hold this line for a bit, I would, I would think we're going to finally shoot up in the USD and maybe even the Bitcoin valuation here. Hard to say especially with somebody who's kind of been battled with the SEC. Uh, I like the project. It does a lot of trading. Uh, I think it's got a pretty uh, long-lasting future in front of it. So we'll we'll see how this one plays out to you. I'm, I'm very interested in this chart in the future, especially over the next year or two. So we got two more. We've got ADA and then Dogecoin of all things coming up. So ADA's a, a this was a challenging chart to throw lines on to. Uh, real challenging so let's just pull up the ada usd save you guys some time because you really probably don't want to hear me blab too much so let's just throw up a new price scale boom there it is how does it work out let's look at the first half here because ADA is one of the older projects so does it work does it work uh kind of all right it kind of means yeah it does to be honest uh, perfect no so December 3rd, 2018, we finally hit a low in our downtrend here and boom, USD low. We end up hitting a new low over here and bottoming out. So I threw in a new trend line on August 26th of 2019. So what is that? Um, about 10 months later. Is it the low? No, the low actually comes when we are testing this again. Uh, I didn't put an error on it. I probably should have. I didn't I didn't know till looking at these though. Uh, the more we test it, the lower it seems to go, right? So another low right there uh, in USD and Bitcoin is is just bouncing off this support line. Uh, we have oops, if I move over, I lose some of my depth here in my chart. We test again and yet another lower low for USD valuation. So the more we're bouncing off this, the more USD is dropping. The more uh, the lower the USD valuation is dropping. So we finally get out above that. We are, we're testing another trend line above it, uh, which was, excuse me, trend line, resistance line turned support. Yeah, it's kind of marking some local bottoms for us, depending on which one of these you pull from. We should probably be pulling from the first time it hits is what I'm learning from, uh, from the data I threw down. But again, I didn't want to change any of this. It's kind of something I was um, exploring, finding out, figuring out as, as we're making the video. And I just, right before the video, and I just didn't want to change it, like I said. So some of these will be the first, some won't be. Um, we did, uh, every time we hit that line, it, it was a, a kind of a one of those micro lows, if we want to call them that, right here again, another another micro low. And was it a good time to buy? Heck yeah, heck yeah it was. So we came from about 15 cents all the way up to three bucks here nearly. So, I mean, that's a really good return on, on your profit. Uh, moving into May of 2023, what happened? We found a... Uh, new line basically that we really hadn't used before kind of matches up with some peaks here so going back to may um i threw a line down was it right i don't know this this church just got such a, a very low angle here that it, it just kind of is gliding to the bottom um i threw a line anyway just to see what happened was it the lowest low no but it was a really good probably time to buy here uh, potentially uh I shouldn't say a really good time to buy, but if you'd waited a little bit, you would have made some money. And I imagine if you wait another year or so, it would probably look pretty good too. We'll see. Uh, the second time though, it hit that line much lower, much better time to buy. turns out probably since 2021, that was probably our low. So that's pretty interesting. However, the valuation went even lower and this is where I, it kind of is tough for me it's it's the same or or just above price as before but yet the btc valuation is a little bit lower so that's that's interesting bounced off that new line again it was just after what might have been the, the cycle low here so far hard to say i'm very close if i had gone the first time it hit i think it would have probably timed it perfectly right there it would have been really close. I mean, these lines are, are really speculative at best. So it's, you know, if I'd moved this line up or down just a little bit, it would have changed everything. So don't don't put too much weight on that. But it hit in that area again, 
and it was very close to a, a low. Uh, it turned out to be the cycle low, or at least this bear market cycle low so far. Uh, we actually went down to another lower low here in Bitcoin, but our USD valuation is a little bit higher. So as of right now, I mean, it's still showing us, probably showing us, I should say, a good time to buy ADA. But we won't know till maybe December, January, February next year if this was really a low. I mean, we need some time to see if the price actually starts coming back up towards 50, 60, 70 cents, whatever it may be, right? So I wouldn't say, I mean, I've got a lot of arrows on here and a lot of them line up with the lows. So I think it's still effective. Perfect? No. But it's interesting. It's very interesting. Doge. So Doge, we're just going to do, Doge got real popular, if you guys didn't know, in 20, I believe it's 2021. Um, ridiculously popular. So kind of going to look at the first half here. It, it's, uh, oops, I need to pull a different one up. Let's do uh, Doge US. I think I just pulled up Doge Bitcoin, didn't I? Let's fix that real quick. The Doge Tether, Doge USD. We'll go off Binance, we'll go new scale. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so what do we got here? Look at that, it's working for a meme coin. For a meme coin that nobody really cared about in 2017, 2018 or so we thought, this is still somewhat effective. Uh, did we time the bottom here? Pretty darn close. Did we time the bottom in October 2016, 2017? Really close. Very close. And again, these support and resistance lines, there you might draw them differently than I do, so you might get different results. Uh, let's not get that in there. Um, so right here, yeah, it still would have been a good time to buy because look what happened. Shot up to Moon. Hey, maybe that was just a coincidence. I don't know, but uh, it's still a good time to buy there. Moving over towards 2024 here, see what we got. I'll just show you guys a little more clearly with our, our chart here. Um, found a new low in February 12th, or give or take. Uh, really, we hit it first in, it looks like, January 8th, and that might have been the better time to do it, and maybe that's what I should have done. But I went with a, a weekly close here, and it was still in the range. So we did hit a, a decent low here. It wasn't the cycle low, which was actually back probably in September. To me, that's what I'm seeing, September of 2022. That's all right. Uh, what are we doing here? We hit that line again, a lower low again. Uh, well, as we hit it, we hit it first here uh, on the first, didn't put an arrow down. We hit it again on the 5th, excuse me, the 1st of uh, July. We hit it on the 5th of August, lower low. We hit it again basically this week and another lower low. So the more we're, we're toying with this line, the more we're playing with this line, trying to use it as support, the lower our USD valuation is going. So the longer we spend down here, it seems on a lot of these charts, the longer we spend on any of these support lines, the lower the USD valuation is going. So if you see a crypto project probably just sitting down here, I, I think you could probably say that it's, safe to say maybe is a better way to put it safe to say that you're going to see this thing drop in its usd valuation uh, and you're probably watching it play out in in real time i'm um, just looking at a few of these trying to see if that had happened at any point really sustainably that we can look at it it, it just really hasn't too much um i think ada is one of the better ones and doge just the longer you spend down here, the longer your or bigger chance of your USD valuation going. I mean, same thing right here. We were just couldn't get away from it, and the USD valuation was dropping that whole time. So that's something you might want to watch for. I don't know. I just want to put this video out, show you guys kind of something I've been looking at lately, and and just trying to time those bottoms. It's not perfect, but it's really going to help you, I think. Uh, and it, and it does show again the importance of the Bitcoin valuation of any crypto project that you might be investing in. Is it moving uh, to the to the right and up, or is it moving to the right and down, like maybe Uniswap is right now? And I, I think Uniswap is a good project. Uh, I think Cardano is a good project as well. But for the most part, they're not really moving to the upside, uh, especially when you start looking at Solana, which is a decent uptrend, or uh, Ethereum's got a decent uptrend too. And of course, maybe one of the best out there is BNB. But anyway, hopefully you guys learned something from the video. If it doesn't make sense, if you guys don't like it, just trash it in the comments. I don't mind. I like the feedback. Let me know what you think, though. Uh, 
And that's really all I got for you guys in this video. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.